One of your first on-screen credits is an after-school special, Schoolboy Father, about teenage pregnancy. True or false? With a title like that, how could it be anything other? <laughs> <laughs> the the titles about those things were great. It was always like telling you exactly what it what it was. My peanut allergy will kill me tomorrow right. at three. Well, actually, I should know the answer to this because I read I read one of your uh, books, and you, didn't you tell a story? I about, do. Right, well, I do. I do a one. By the way, I, I do a one man show, which you have to come to. Please. Instead of writing a third book, yes, I created this one man show. I'm playing really? Vegas on the thirteenth. Are the you way. serious? I'm playing oh. the strip, dude. Hold on a second. Wait. Rob I'm playing Lowe. the strip. Hold on a second. And April thirteenth. Yes. April thirteenth. Where? Which casino? Which uh, uh, Planet Hollywood. I'm in the course. The, the, I mean, it's so fun that I like. It's like a dream come true for me. So you're, but I and I do a big after school special riff in it, which is what made me think of it. Okay, that's fantastic. It's so cool. So if you're guy, anybody's around Vegas on the 13th. Okay, it's my my Vegas debut. Now you tell the like Elvis the story about uh, Cary Grant, right? Meeting I tell it in the in the show. Can you can you recount that right now, real quick? Well, there's two of them. Okay, the one with the soap on the rope. Oh yeah, that? that's okay. the one. That's the one that's in. <laughs> so uh, I, I my, the very first time I ever mm -hmm. watched myself star in anything was the after school special, Schoolboy Father, and I I was trying to date his daughter, who is this gorgeous, still is gorgeous Jennifer. And she said, come to my house. You'll watch it with my dad. My dad's an actor. I didn't put two and two together. Cary Grant answered the door. I had no <laughs> idea that Jennifer Grant was Cary Grant's daughter. And I watched Schoolboy Father with Cary Grant. And he was like, you remind me of a young Warren Beatty. And I was like, oh, that's great. And then as I left... Because he he was like a brand ambassador for Fabergé. There you are in the in the film right it's, there. It looks like I'm starring in the Karen Carpenter story, <laughs> yes. by the way. <laughs> You're a young man. I really don't understand. Yeah. That might be the most sexually ambiguous <laughs> photograph. So I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. You're in the middle of the uh, story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Am I actually breastfeeding? <laughs> and like can we pull that shot like back up? Oh I need to see that. E I could actually be breastfeeding. It's, a, the way it's I look an interesting there. photograph, but... Uh, as a masculine young but man. But you're watching um, this with Cary Grant. But I'm watching with Cary Grant, and I, as I go down, as I leave, and I'm pulling down the driveway, he's chasing me down the driveway in his bathrobe. Mm -hmm. Young man, young man, and he wants to give me all his Fabergé products because he was a brand ambassador. So for, for years, I cherished... My soap on a rope from <laughs> Cary Grant in the shape of a microphone. Or as I like to say, I think it was the microphone. I'm not I think that's what the shape was. Young man. Young man, have this and it's oh, properly God. shaped for the way your hair makes you look. <laughs> Here's the next one. You're credited as a performer of Proud Mary during the 1989 Academy Awards. Is that true? Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's it's it's our nation's great shame. What do you mean? My appearance on the Academy Awards. Is that right? Oh. This is a man who needs to spend some time on Google. Okay. Or needs to spend some time every year before the Oscars. They will bring me out as the Oscar punching bag for most embarrassing Oscar moment. Apparently, is my duet with, with Snow White singing Proud Mary. Is that what you now, did? Notwithstanding the fact that two years ago they announced the wrong best picture, mind you. <laughs> I'm the problem, see? Uh, it's me. 30 years on. Oh. All right, last one. During the filming of The Outsiders, you turned 18, and the other boys in the cast pranked you by trashing your hotel room by saran wrapping the toilet and spraying fire extinguishers into the room. Is that a true story? Absolutely true. It was like, th that was my college experience. I was eight, uh, turning 18. It would have been the equivalent of going away from home for the first time, and that's my fraternity. Those guys are my it's, frat brothers. What a shot into that the, is. Into this Seven day. across, man. Jeez, yeah. look at that. It's a good group. Look how tough Tom Cruise is trying to look in that photo. Dude, Tom Cruise was such a baller. He was. He was. He was probably my, one of my closest friends, and he was so great. And he, I always looked up to him, and he always had these cool things that he would come up with. And I remember he, he was the first guy that ever came up with this conceit of, tightening the titles of the movies he was in to make him sound badass. Like, like he did this, you know, the football movie, All the Right Moves? Yeah. But yeah, man, when I was making moves, I, uh, <laughs> and I was like, he's That's a baller. badass. That's baller. It's so baller. But then, you know, it was a problem when he'd be like, yeah, when I was making cocktail, <laughs> it was kind of a, you know, when okay. I, was, I, I liked cock. No. Oh. The other one's no good either. It was long. Yeah, when I was in tail. When I was in tail, you can't do it either way. Can't do it either way. Yeah. It's no good. When I was making... So you'd, you'd go like wing? Is that what you do when you did right, TV? No, you do, when, when I was doing West. When you were in West. You know, Mar when, when, uh, when Marty Sheen and I were doing West. Um, you know, on the set of Boy, me and <laughs> yeah. Chris Farley. No, yeah, when I was on a Boy, um, in Oxford Blues sets up, uh, just Blues. 
See, it's important to choose. If you choose the wrong one, it's not as good. It, there's it, always one that's cooler. There. <laughs> like, which is like, like when I was doing recreation. Yeah. Doesn't it? But if I'm doing yeah. parks. Right. Instead of parks. You did parks. Yeah, man. Amy Poehler and I in parks. We laughed all the time. <laughs> on parks. On the set of Wayne, I was just, you know. And by wing. the way, you want to talk about Tom Cruise, too. This was the fact that blew our minds when, when the last uh, Mission Impossible came out and he was running all oh, over it's London, right? Those and the like best a, movies ever. On like a broken, a broken ankle that had just amazing. healed or whatever. Is that he, was, he is right now the age in these movies doing this that Wilford Brimley was during Cocoon. That's a fact. That is. That's boom, like mind blowing. That's it's mind it's, blowing. It, 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 it's. I don't, and I don't know what it is. What makes it mind blowing is that that Tom Cruise is doing that at that age, or Wilford Brimley was really that young in Cocoon. I did a movie with Wilford Brimley. He was the first great character actor I ever worked with. It was a movie called Hotel New Hampshire. What are so, we doing on that one? So when you did Hampshire, Hampshire, no, Hampshire. no, no. When when I was you, doing Hampshire, you, Lane. Hampshire. <laughs> it's better than Hotel. No. When you did hotel. How about just when I was doing new? When you did new, right? When I was doing new. <laughs> Camp. When I was working on new with Brimley, um, <laughs> Brimley was the, fr he was the first actor I ever met who only read his part of the script. What do you mean? Like, so he, he died halfway mm -hmm. through the movie, not mm -hmm. actually in real life, but his right. character. Right. So he had no idea right. what the movie right. was about. Right. Because he didn't read it after his character died. <laughs> So he would just drop, he didn't, he just waited until no, he was time. like, what do they call, we're driving the seven days. What do they call you in this movie? And I was like, well, they call me John Ogre. Well, then that's what I'll call you, John O. I was like, I, he hadn't read it. It was clear. <laughs> <laughs> Normally he talks about what's the right thing to do too. I mean, that's what he talks about with the oats. It's the right thing. And Not how great is he in the greatest sports movie of all time? The natural. I'm a Hoosiers oh. guy. I may be, oh, I'm. Negotiating, you'll yes, love this. Yes. To do a movie with David Onspach, who directed Hoosiers, and Rudy to play Carol Rosenblum, and it's the story of the 1958 championship and the creation of the modern NFL. Let's do it. Called Let's, the season. It's great. Uh, it's a, so we're trying to put amazing. this movie together, and it's going to be. If we can pull it off, it's going to be awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. This is great stuff, man. Yeah. I love when you come on, Rob. We, we have could, fun. We could talk about anything. Yeah, I know, right? The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.